All right, it's uh, one o'clock. I'm gonna call this meeting to order. Right. Do we have a approval of the agenda? I need one thing added to it. There was something to the town need to advertise in the yearbook. Okay. So maybe. I actually need to add something to it. It was about the uh, pay raise that we have discussed for the uh, employees. So, do you want to add these after four, Sean? Yeah. Okay. Make a motion, Kenneth, to approve the uh, agenda as amended with the uh, yearbook advertisement for the Robbinsville High School as number five. And then uh, number six, the pay raise for the employees is number six in the new business. Okay, all in favor? Any opposed? But at this time, she doesn't have the minutes ready, so we'll just have to table that to the next meeting. If to do that. I'll make a motion to uh, table the minutes for the last meeting because we've got some internet issues and not able to get it all together. And we can look at those minutes the next meeting. I'll say. All right, all in favor? Any opposed? All right. At this time, I'll open up the floor to uh, public comment. Herbert Merchants. Go ahead, Mr. Merchants. There's more of a question that I was asked to ask you based on the library. The, uh, what is the issue with Tri County Community College? Are they ever going to come back and reopen that campus? Is the city paying anything into that property, or is that all done? At Level. That's done at the county level. And, uh, and we don't have, it's my understanding that we've only got one representative from Brown County on the Board of Trustees at Tri County. The rest of them comes from Cherokee County and Clay County. And our, the representative that's on there was appointed by the governor. My understanding that the county commissioners don't even get to appoint any representatives. Is that correct, Becky? Any word about when they might reopen the campus? They're doing um, English as a second language, computer skills okay. classes, a um, couple of other things. They're doing all the stuff with the high school kids still. They're actually doing part of the stuff with the high school kids. We've asked for them to bring it back on campus uh, in person, so they're doing part of the stuff with them and part of that still virtual. But they are beginning to move things back to that. So they're doing more like a hybrid format with they the, they are with some of them, but they are in my understanding they're beginning to move things more in some new programs. It, it sounds like that most of this is coming out of the high school taking. Uh, I don't know. I think that there's several things that are that are just happening to the community as well. They're beginning to bring back. Well, Mary at the library wanted me to ask these questions. Yeah, she was very curious. What was that you were referring to, Angie? That you said something brought back to the community? I think they're beginning to open up a lot of the uh, classes just for the community mm -hmm. at large, in addition to some of the high school students. Right. And they're getting ready to move. They did a needs assessment um, over the time post-COVID, and they have, they're going to be putting some more trade opportunities in there for people to take trades classes. So they're, they're actively working toward getting it up and running again. So Lance Collins will be the person to contact the Tri-County at that office for more information. Yeah, they used to have a computer lab there, and that got closed in 2018, I believe, 19. And that was a good thing for the community. I wish they would open that back up. <coughs> further public comment. Do we have a motion to close public comment? Make a motion to close public comment.
Kenneth. Kenneth, can you hear me? I make a motion to close public comment. Do you second that, Kenneth? She made a motion to uh, close public call me up. Okay, I'll take it. Okay. All right. All in favor? Any opposed? Okay. Uh, our first under O business, uh, still working on a substitute for invoice cloud. And uh, been looking at this company, Edmonds, which that would be a substitute for both invoice cloud and southern software but due to covid they were supposed to come and do an, an, a live demonstration and they had to cancel because of COVID, they caught covid but they're going to be here trying to make it this week to do a demonstration so this seems like a good program more streamlined and it would uh, it would eliminate invoice cloud and uh, it would be a substitute for uh, southern software so we'll just have to keep that on until next meeting before we can. And uh, next up is the uh, comp time policy. And I reached out to the UNC School of Government about that. And there is a cap on the, the number of comp hours they can accumulate. And you had mentioned something about after 50, what was it, you said 50 something hours I got double time? Oh, you said something about that. The UNC School of Government said that was that there was no threshold like that. Mm -hmm. No, I, I don't remember that. I'm sorry. I just wonder what what what's the cap on it, Mayor? Two hundred forty hours. Two hundred forty. Okay. Yeah, but there's no double time after a certain amount of overtime hours. After two hundred forty hours, do we have to then yeah, check was, more? Yeah. Okay. I'll need to be doing that. Let's see. It has over 240. Looks like Chad. Okay. Is there a limit to, like, you guys want to keep it at 240 or you want to keep their comp hours down? Like, how are you guys going to do that? Well, we haven't really decided how to address it. I mean, that's a lot of hours even for Chad to have because the way he has to work and he mm -hmm. gets called in. Looking at that right now, Linda, how many are at that 80 hour threshold? Or over? Mm -hmm. Three of them is over the 80 hours. Besides Chad. Chad would be more. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Can you did you hear that, Kenneth? The 80 hour, okay. The other ones are over 100. Yeah. 
the other country. three or a little over a hundred. Well, I know we'll have to amend the policy for the comp time. I'm going to make a motion to um, amend the comp policy to 80 hours. After 80 hours of comp time, they get the overtime, which would be time and a half. And then we need to pay out the other ones to get on down. Um, you mean they want to pay them out? Like now, like the next pay period? Yeah. When you mean pay the others, you mean everybody's above 80, is what you're saying? Yes, uh huh. Get them down to that 80 mark threshold. And I'll say. Uh, all in favor? You can oppose. <coughs> That street behind it was discussed last meeting. I'll put it off the deed for it. Um, I know that Kenneth probably can't see this, right. can you? Kenneth, yeah. since, since you cannot see the copy of this deed that was published at the Register of Deeds, I'm going to make a motion that we table this okay. until our next meeting just so that we can, you can look at it too because no decision can be made since you can't look at it. We just need to strike number four off the agenda. We've got to discuss on that. Is the board good with striking number four? Yeah. Okay. You want to make a motion to strike number four? We'll make a motion to strike number four in the old business, which was the agreement for the well site. Yeah. Do you second that, Kim? a pork and ladder from the instant commerce and it hadn't gone here yet. You make sure that because Joel said it was <clears throat> most more like the 20 feet of it. Are you talking about if it comes through the mail? Yeah. It's when coming. it gets to Robbinsville, mm -hmm. we always deliver all the mail every day. We missed another letter through the port from the NCD. Part of the environmental quality too a while back. Has it been returned? I don't know, we just never got it. If the mail comes to Robbinsville, we delete This the is mail. real important. Mm -hmm. All right, next up is uh, finance officer update. Well, my update, I can't access it because the internet's down, but I'll do the best I can to remember. Um, I'll been working, I've got a couple of the banks reconciled the two small ones. Um, I haven't had time to go any further on that. But, um, I'll be having Oh, it would help, you know, if we had a little bit of time or even a day a week to where we could work without the interruptions. And I know that's hard because it's just being a man in the office. Um, phones get crazy at times and like you can't get much done when the phones are going crazy and then you got people coming in. It's hard. Uh, I have done all the payroll reporting, got all that up to date. Uh, also like some of the supplies, we're needing some supplies and all that. Chad's phone as an example needs uh, also the, what's it called, Chad, the invoice, no, no the invoice, iCloud, it's on the iCloud, uh, 
I highly think we need a credit card in the office, even if it has a small limit, to where like we can make small purchases. That would help me and Amanda both. We could even put like Chad's iCloud on it for whatever if we needed to, because it's a monthly thing. It has to has to have a card link to it, and he needs that because of the pictures and things that he has to take. Uh, I also need a webcam for the computer because a lot of the things require a webcam. And even like with talking with Becky, like she can talk to me and we can go through things with the webcam, but without it. My computer doesn't have a webcam. Hopefully he's going to have my computer up and going soon. Um, I'm waiting on Abraham on that. It's not old one is like really old and really slow. Um, um, how can we get a webcam ordered? We could probably just order one or we could get Abraham to order one. Either way, uh, speakers would also be great for, I mean, I'm going to have to have the speakers to go with the webcam, or else, like, if I'm communicating with Becky or anybody, be able, I won't be able to hear them without the speakers. And those earphones, I'll cut it to you. Do we have a credit card? We, not that I'm aware How do we go about? I've got one, and you have one. Um, you had one for the RTA. The RTA's got one, but that's yeah. not for the town right. bill. So you can order those supplies and that webcam and those speakers. Yeah, I could order them one. on my credit card. Yeah. So we can do that today. I want to make a motion that the mayor um, order the webcam, the speakers. The supplies like the paper clips, the post-it notes, the, all of that today, November the 1st. Okay. Now what about, do you guys want to, like I said, we kind of need one in the office. Also like Chad's thing, it needs to be on a credit card. Like for his phone, Lamar's phone, we're going to need it as well. Do you guys is it possible that we can have a card in the office? Because if Sean's not available and we need a card, sometimes it's hard to get. Yeah, well, she's asking if it's okay if she works for a separate credit card. Yeah, and don't have a, it doesn't have to have a large limit, because mm -hmm. it has a little bit to where we could order things we need. Mm -hmm. As far as emergency expenditures, we might have to go out and purchase um, air compressors, and you know, there's no telling you know, what might go wrong. Hopefully nothing, but it's happened a lot. In the I'm going to make a motion to um, have the financial director to <coughs> get a credit card for the emergency that. expenditures and put a five thousand dollar limit on it. Uh, all in favor? Any opposed? And then maybe you can order what it is that Sean or Chad's need today yeah. too, yeah. And, and Lamar's. And all it is is uh, uh, basically storage that I can back my phone up. Like right now, if something happened to it and, or I lost it, the, everything I have, you know, for the SCADA, all the wiring and the diagrams and stuff, it's gone. Becky, could you address the board? Sure. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you for um, letting me talk with the board. I um, <coughs> wanted to give kind of a two-prong update um, recommendations. So I want to give you an update as far as the June 30, 22 audit is concerned. Um, as you know, Michael has been given all of us weekly updates as to his progress. Just to give you a sense <coughs> of why his progress has slowed down considerably, it's, it, and Sean and I talked about this in the office on Monday, is he's working on the bank reconciliations for the general fund and water and sewer. And the way, without getting too deep in the weeds, the way that the Southern software system works, and it's a glitch that's, <laughs> I'm dealing with it with several other towns, is it, it doesn't post um, deposits 
um, where it's easy for the bank rate to be done. So basically, Michael is having to go through and weed through every single daily report, try to get the ledger to, to uh, match that daily report, and, and there's issues in setup that's, um, again, pervasive with anybody that's on Southern Software that if they do a void in the system for a water bill or a tax bill, it throws the, um, the voids wrong. And so it's very counterintuitive for him to go through and just tie back all the deposits. And so he is at this point weeding through all of that. It's, it's, it appears like he's made some pretty good progress on posting um, the miscellaneous items the, the debits and the credits come through on the bank statement that are ACH draft, that kind of thing. Um, of course, now he's, he's out with some surgery. So, you know, we're pushing, or he's pushing to try to, you know, wrap that up, hopefully by the end of this month, which is November now. Um, and I've spoken with your auditors, and, you know, their hope is that if he, if he can get that to them by the end of November, then they can wrap up, um, well actually they're trying to wrap up 22, he's working on 23. Um, they're trying to wrap up 22, they're thinking probably the end of January. Then they can jump as quick as they, as, as he gets done onto 23 and try to get it done by, they say March, I'm gonna say probably April, um, just me knowing how things go. So. There's light at the end of the tunnel. It's not quite the freight train anymore, but we, you know, the town is still behind the eight ball because yesterday was the deadline um, for the 23 audit to be considered timely um, to be submitted to the LGC. So, um, but, but there is progress being made. So, you know, his, his goal, and I think your goal is to have him complete, done, and you know, phased out by the end of December, and you know, barring any major issues, because um, we do have a plan on how he's he's working through these deposits. Um, you know, I'm, I'm fairly confident that he can get that complete. Um, I did spend the morning with Linda and um, Amanda, and you know, I want to commend the work they're doing. They they've got a Herculean task to try to, as I said, it, it was, they're kind of building a ship at sea. They're trying to, to, you know, do all the catch up, but they're bailing water at the same time to try to do all of the day-to-day the -day that comes in. So, um, Linda's got to get a really, you know, good grasp with um, the bank breaks, which is key. And, you know, we, I showed them the dynamics with Southern and what her challenge is going to be there. So. That's one reason that, um, as she said, we want to have this webcam so that she and I can do Teams meetings. She can share her screen with me and that basically, you know, I'm on call for her um, to help her with whatever she needs. And, and um, she did mention that, you know, the board had approved for um, some overtime to be, you know, utilized and, you know, that's, that's going to be key. Um, because to get all of the pre, you know, get caught up to current, she needs quiet time. And, you know, because you can't, you can't do a bank rag and be jumping up and down, you know, every 15 so minutes. You really have to work in that Saturday. Yeah. Really I, think, I think she got some pretty good progress made on that weekend um, mm -hmm. that she was able to work. Um, I did, I did know. Um, and, and this is no fault of theirs because they've walked into, you know, literal and figurative mess. They've got a lot of filing that needs to be caught up and a filing system that works for them to be caught up and created. And I would recommend, and I know this sounds like oh God, she's wanting you to spend money, but I would recommend y'all try to find um, a part-time temp purely temp, because once they get this work done, they won't need this person to come in and help them set up a filing system. 
help that makes sense to them um, and help them keep keep up the day-to-day -day filing because you know every day creates masses of paperwork and on the surface when you're saying well gosh that's going to cost money in the long run it will save the town money because if you've got clean records for your auditors to work from that's going to help in your audit fees mm -hmm. and just like you're investing in the overtime for your your office staff that's going to pay dividends as well because the more you're compliant with state statutes and and they're able to work efficiently the better off the town's going to be and the better position the town's going to be when it comes to grants and if you have to borrow money and you know right now your cdg funds are frozen so you can't move forward well this is all part of that goal of moving the town forward so that you guys can get these you know, keep these good things rolling because Sean and I mean, discussed the other day about this ARC grant, this you know huge blessing for the town. Absolutely. Linda needs to be caught up and her focus needs to be on the things that it's going to take to administer that grant. And she needs to be able to move on and move forward in her learning process. Yeah. So, you know, I'm here to support her in that and, and I want her you know, to, to be able to, to get through the weeds in order to take care of the big stuff. Um, part of that too, I would recommend, and, and you did it to a degree, is creating a workspace in that back room to where when Linda or Amanda, either one, are working on big projects, then they can you know, retire back to the to the back and as I used to say, hide and work. I mean, I used to go to transit to hide so I could get some work done. It, it's required for a successful finance officer, especially one that's trying to, you know, catch up the old and keep the new up. So, you know, I, I, I think that's gonna be real key as well. Um, I wanted to dovetail off the um, credit card. I, 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 since the um, staff will be having a credit card with a small credit uh, balance, I've got some sample credit card policies that I'll get to Linda so that the board can review those and, and detail of what policy you're already using. You know, credit cards can create internal control risk, but if we put in place appropriate procedures, um, checks and balances, then, you know, the board can can be more sure that the, the uh, purchases being made are truly town purchases and that they've truly been approved and most importantly pre-audited okay so because pre-audit applies whether it's a credit card p card check or cash which i hope y'all don't pay anything out in cash i wouldn't do that and then in that regard um, the board would want to consider setting a spending limit for Linda as your finance officer. Um, that's, and, and you can start it low as you know she's learning the job and then as, as the board and, and she builds that relationship that could be adjusted up um, to your comfort level that would allow her to make the small expenditures like what Chad needs you know, for that, the iPhone, um, and give her that discretion. That being said, you know, and again, internal controls are key there. We would want to have to make sure that everything's pre-audited and, and all of the steps that are necessary for the, the mayor to do his part stay intact, um, but it would give her that discretion in the unforeseen event that the mayor is, has to be out of the office or whatever. Especially on emergencies, so um, you know I think you're. I think Linda's getting a, a pretty fair grasp on what it's taken to to manage the finances. It will take her a while, but it takes any good finance officer a while to get you know their their feet solid underneath. Them. And I appreciate the fact that the board is is supporting her in this. That is absolute key. You know, if your board's on board um, and your tone at the top is, is correct and you're, and you're being diligent about internal controls, then, you know, I think over time we can get 
the town back on track with its finance and physical health. So, <coughs> biggest thing stewardship and accountability. So, I think, I think we're getting there. And I didn't know if the board had any questions for me today. You got any questions for Becky Kent? And the Edmonds, is the bank rec process more streamlined than oh, Southern? Oh, yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, it's not, it's, it's, it's uh, still, it's still tedious, but it's nothing like Southern. And I'm, I'm, I shouldn't say this, but um, Southern is, um, when you talk to a tech support and you say, my bank rec don't balance, and tech support says, plug it, that is, and a finance officer, <coughs> accountant, and should be the board's worst nightmare up there. Mm -hmm. You should never, ever, ever plug a bank rate to make it work. And that's what's, that's the, that is the um, advice that these towns are being given. I've talked to three other towns that are on Southern. And I'm going to be honest, when this town went to Southern, I nearly had a nervous breakdown. It was that bad. We had a streamlined approach when I was doing the consulting where I could come in, I could close the books in about three hours. It turned into days and days and days and nights and weekends. And um, so it has never properly worked. I have worked in Andrews since I came on board with LGC to try to tweak their setup. It doesn't work. You, you make the tweak, it doesn't work. So there is an inhibitory <coughs> flaw there in their system. So yes, I think she'll find that it's a you know, I, I would hate to say absolutely because I would want to see when you guys do your demo, mm -hmm. that's probably one of the main questions you need to ask um, tomorrow is how, how does the utilities and the tax collection side integrate in with the ledger? Okay. And um, I was hoping that I could kind of sit in or listen in. I'm not quite sure if I'm able, but if I'm able, I will uh, tomorrow just so that I can help um, the staff here know if this would be a good fit. But I, anything will be an improvement, I think. Yeah, for sure. So if it's me. not a good fit for us, Becky, mm -hmm. will you have a plan B? Yeah, there's other <laughs> systems, um, and, and so I wouldn't, I wouldn't just give up. Because uh -huh, I don't I want to be stuck with Southern if, yeah. if it's failing mm -hmm. us that bad. Yeah, I would, I would let's say we, you look at Edmonds and it just doesn't seem like a good fit. There's, there's a plethora of other packages out there for small towns. Um, I hear a lot of folks using, they call it Tyler Technologies, they're happy with it. Um, Harris, they're happy with Harris. I used Harris before I went to Edmonds. Um, the, the, the big positive thing with Ed, Edmonds is, and I don't want to sound like a salesperson because I'm not supposed to be selling anything, but the, a, a positive with Edmonds that I found when I converted from Harris to Edmonds was the technical support. They were right in there digging with you, trying to figure out what the issues were. You call them, they call you back within about 30 minutes. And they were truly dedicated to helping you solve the problem. And as is uncommon in some tech supports, they didn't make you feel like you were done. And a lot of times when you get on the line with these folks, they act like you ought to know as much as they do. Well, if you did, you wouldn't be calling. So, but it's always a scary thing if you're calling a tech support and you know more than they do. That's it. No. And you're trying to explain to them how accounting works because they have no background in accounting. You need someone at tech support who's been there, done that, and has either been a finance officer or a small town or, you know, has a good accounting background. So, so. There's other options. In addition, the league also has that, like Mountain, which I've done the demo on it, and it, it seems like a good uh, option to me. Appreciate it. I'll shut up. All right. <laughs> All right. Next up on the agenda is Ms. Glenda. And uh, 
um, October the uh, 12th, I was coming down 129 North, and I ran over a water meter, and the cover was off of it, and I brought the jacket edges what was left, and I brought two pictures. Yeah, here's her tire. It's lost the sidewall really bad. Damaged the wheel <coughs> soon. Here's the wheels damaged. Yeah. <coughs> and those were new tires. We yeah. put on in July. Oh, no. <laughs> you um, it probably maybe wouldn't have been as bad as the top and the covers off the pipe she hit was jagged. Yeah. And she, you brought a piece of it, didn't you? I brought the whole thing. Yeah. And the cover was laid off to the side of the road. We looked online, no one but Toyota, it's, you know, Toyota factory wheel, because we bought the car new. We looked online, you cannot buy a replacement wheel from anybody else. I mean, lots of people sell wheels, there's nothing but Toyota has that. And we even went online trying to find a cheaper Toyota wheel, they're all about the same price. Yeah. So the price of going to Bronx is the one that they quoted her at the Toyota dealership in Asheville where we got the quote. Okay. This uh, $1,007.96 is the quote. Tire and that, wheel. Uh, oh. No, that $1,000 is the quote. Okay. And that's the one that they quoted her. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you'd have to take so a fourth of that. And then the wheel was 701. There's two. two yeah, you got to take that. Yeah, the, the total on the tires, you just need a yeah. fourth of that. I don't see the time. quote for the wheel. Yeah, she's oh, got it. Okay. Do you know what that quote was, right? It was 701 and some change. And then a quarter mm -hmm. of this 1,007. You know. That 1,007 is all four of my tires. Okay. So it'd be a fourth of that. Yeah, four yeah. tires. Plus so. the 701. And yeah, I yeah so that, that makes it about 950. I turned it in to yeah. the yeah, they've got a paint out here somewhere. Yeah, I mean, okay. I can imagine she's just a man. Hang on just a second. Chad, do you know why those come off and that sort of thing happens? Yeah. Unfortunately, it happens, but not a lot. But see, what happens is when Southern Town puts in a, a water valve box. Um, <coughs> the top twists and it'll go so far to match the pavement and it won't go any farther. So they make bigger ones. But anyway, when, when the state comes through and paves, they usually add an inch riser. Depending on how you know how much they mill down and take off the road or if they just uh, add to it, you know. Um, but when they come through and add, they usually do about an inch, maybe two inches because they go down an inch. But anyway, they put a riser on it that's an inch, and then they put the box down in it. Sometimes when those big dually trucks come through, like the 18-wheeler, the dually tire that gets caught in between it, and it pulls it out of the box. So That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And then, and I'm sure that's what happened, and then she came through, and it was already sideways or something, not completely out, and it's come out, and, you know, damaged it. I, honestly, I'd be surprised if it didn't, you know, make, make the alignment yeah. messed up. The, I mean, well, it, now, all we can do is put a donut on it, and we don't right. drive it because of that donut. You don't want to put miles on that. You can't put any speed on a donut. Yeah, yeah it, it drove okay with just a donut. I don't think there's any anything. Yeah, if it, it didn't, if it wasn't, you know, yeah, I don't think it. there's anything with front end alignment messed up. Just the damage on the wheel, it cut the wheel, and uh, actually didn't the wheel either brought the surface of it up, and the tire was down, the, the slice down the side. Well, Glenda, I know that Kenneth can't see these pictures and stuff, but I know that we are, you know, responsible, but I would like to make a motion to table it until our next meeting so Kenneth can see the That's gonna be a nice effects yeah, well, of the next meeting. It's the next meeting. Yeah, that's good. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. I just didn't want to make it and you be blindsided by it. So you've seen it. 
Okay. Okay. So I'm going to make a motion. Kenneth, I don't have the quote in front of me for the um, front or the wheel, but it was. Did you find it? So I have what she sent me, and all it shows that's two fifty one ninety nine. That is one tire, mm -hmm. but on here it doesn't show anything around. It's a different quote for the wheel. It was from Toyota. Did you, did you keep a copy of the book? I did I did not Did you email it to her or did you bring it in person? I brought the, the wheel quote in. Oh, okay. yeah, I printed her one off when that's the way it was Okay. Exactly what the price would be. This might as well say 252. I think she said 702 for the yeah, first. 701. 701 is some change. Yeah, 701 is some change. Yeah. So 702. I'll say. And then 252. That's 954. Yeah. Does 954 sound about right for that? Yes, ma'am. I'm going to make a motion, Kenneth, that we um, write them a check for this um, tire damage and wheel damage for 952. Yeah, I'll stack it. All, right, all in favor? I've got it right here. She's got it. Okay. So did that cover it? Can you possibly email that to her and then that way she'll have that invoice to go along with this too? Let's not text it to her. So that's going to be 958.91. It's a little bit more than what we just stated. So it'll be $958.91. <coughs> Did you hear that, Kenneth? Yeah, I'm going to plan that. So I guess I'll just retrieve my amount that we had said and then, what was it? 958.91. You good with that, Kim? Yeah, I'll take that. All in favor? Any opposed? All right, motion opposed. Try to get you a check, Linda. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do you want to pick it up, Linda, or do you want us to mail it to you? Or? I just got that. Okay. All right then. That work. All right. Next up is. Uh, Thank you for your time, guys. Yeah. Baby. Have a good one, Ken. Right. Next up is Michelle Shiplett and Angie Nye. They want to present something. I'll be well. <laughs> well, as as you guys may remember, it's been so many years now. In 2018, Great entered into a lease agreement with the town to do repair works on the old VFW building, which was in total disrepair at the time. And since that time, we have partnered with the school, and because one of the things that we focus on with Great is education and workforce. So it's a natural thing, and we put Angie's brain at work because she is so good at what she does on her end of things. And we um, got a grant from Golden Leaf Foundation to create what is a workforce incubator. And I'm going to let Angie explain all that part to you, but I wanted to give you an update on what is happening and what you can expect to finally see in that space down there. You want me to tell them kind of what, the, what we're using mm -hmm. for? So you yes. Can, yeah, so uh, so this goes back at even Becky. Becky and I went to uh, Wilmington to visit a similar area and then we, Michelle and I have been to other places. So, so the gist of this is we want to create a workforce development center that our high school students can use to, you know, we teach them skills and we want them to uh, 
uh, generalize that to other areas, but it's very hard just to teach that in theory. We want to give them a place where they can actually work and use those skills in real life so that they understand what it's like to encounter a customer that might come to them and they're a little unhappy or if things go well and the benefits of that. So um, the model we're looking at is using our students with special needs that already are working in an occupational setting um, or a life skill setting to uh, work in a, uh, we already have businesses at the school anyway, some um, industries, we have a coffee shop already, we have a, a supplementation and imprinting, uh, we have additional uh, entrepreneurship classes, we've now added a, a pet gift and uh, treat supply uh, business at the alternative school, so we've got several things. We need to bring these things on over to Main Street, one, to, to make our Main Street come alive, and then two, to give these kids an opportunity to practice their skills in that real environment. So the, the plan would be to bring our students there with peer helpers, if need be, and, um, and you know, I, I think the goal that is to walk in, you don't need to know who's who. You just need to know that everybody there is working to, to hone their skills, whatever their skills are, and uh, be open to the public. The goal would be that we would uh, have kids, work. we have a four period high school day, so they would be working in there all four periods, and they would probably be some coming and going. We've got plenty of transportation to bring them back and forth, and then have a uh, person that would run it, a manager. We would, we've wrote all that into the grant, and then the goal, end goal would be that we make enough money that, that one, we're breaking even, but then we're making enough money that we're able to gainfully employ some students in the afternoons, in the summers, uh, so and on the weekends, so that that would be some more employment opportunities in Grand County. So, right. there you go. so you're going to run it during normal school hours plus after hours. We hope right. to then extend it to after hours to, to benefit. Yeah. So so to date, there's been a little over a hundred thousand dollars worth of repairs done to the building already. I mean, it, it was in pretty bad shape. So we are going to. We have um, Chip Howe, who is architecture native, for, native form architecture and design out of Asheville is the one that we've been working with that has created this for us. And Angie actually has some samples of the materials that are going to be used. So basically what will happen is this is the wall where the mural's at, this, out, this outside wall here. You'll come in from the front or handicap access from the side where the mural's at. There'll be dining and there'll be that area. And then over here will be where they'll be able to put their second business, their supplementation business, their doggy treats business, or the whatever. Gift shop, the gift the shop and, and of all of that in there as well. So we just wanted you guys to know what to expect and what it's going to look like and that we are... <coughs> We're still at it. We're still working on it. We're going to get there. <laughs> medieval theme, that's kind of what it's going to look like on the inside. And then at some point, we'll try to make it look like a little bit more on the outside. and mm -hmm. Something that we can all be really proud of. So she's got some samples of those. Yeah, that. So we just want to do the, you know, the rock. And like I said, we want to, um, one thing that we can say is everybody supports our students across the whole community. And so we felt like we needed to do something that would kind of go along with white night things and so something medieval. So still keeping it light, but still that that kind of thing. So. Right. So we're excited. Yeah. So we're getting ready to, the next step <coughs> is, is that we're going to put it out for bid for who's going to come in and do the actual construction work. So hopefully by the end of this month is what we're shooting for. We should have a contractor under contract. And and so also the, uh, our carpentry class is going to try to help as they can, but yeah. they've got some other things going on. They're, they're building another house um, in the community, and then they're also working on finishing their barn. So they're going to help as they can. We just couldn't commit them 100% to, to finishing right. all of this because so, we want to go ahead and get in it. Right. And, and this is something that the county as a whole can really be proud of because Golden Leaf, who is the funder, has been very impressed with mm -hmm. this, and they are looking at maybe being able to replicate this kind of an ideal in other communities. And wouldn't it be good if we could say, hey, those people in Grand County can actually think, you know, because we don't get much good press, do we? So I think that's, you know, that's a plus to it all. But we just wanted you guys to have an update about what's going on. I mean, it, it's still your building, you know. 
y'all have questions for us that we're glad to answer those? Or? What all business did you say was going to be in there, Angie? So right now we have a, a coffee shop at the high school that our exceptional children program runs. So we'll move that over. And uh, but we're also planning to work with our culinary arts class to do some simple sandwiches there as well because we'll have a full commercial kitchen in it. Yeah. Um, we're going to work with our exceptional children program. They already have a sublimation or an imprinting. Y'all use that probably different exactly. ways. Um, so they'll bring that over there. Uh, there'll still be some classwork that they will do, but they'll bring their products over there and maybe work a little bit on site. Um, the high school has an entrepreneurship class, and they do things like they print T-shirts and, and different things like that. So they'll, they'll also <coughs> be working with that. And then our alternative school has that new business where they're doing pet supplies and, and pet treats. Mm -hmm. So they'll be working with it. So we'll, have, we'll touch several classes throughout the high school. And part of the goals that we have with Golden Leaf is that we, we help kids get some certification in, in one of the uh, career technical education areas yeah. with that. So when they leave us, they're more skilled to just go right into the workplace. Yeah, that's good. What kind of vocational programs you got now besides carpentry and other tech? Okay, let's see. Uh, culinary arts, I talked yeah. about that. Yeah. Um, entrepreneurship, which is big because in Graham County you have a lot of people start their own business. So that's helping them with business planning and, and goal setting and, and where to go for the money and, and those kind of things. Um, we have still have our uh, nursing fundamentals class where our students leave us usually with their already CNAs by the time they leave us. Uh, carpentry, uh, auto mechanics. Um, we just started a new agriculture program oh, awesome. this year. That's if you'll notice there's a new barn going up over there. Yeah. Uh, we just received a, a, about a $480,000 grant from Dogwood to um, add uh, some additional supplies for some of those CTE and start some start earlier and with more in the middle school because we want kids to actually be planning for what they want to do. Um, we also have some like Microsoft credentialing classes too for the computer side of it. Yeah. Um, I'm probably forgetting some of them. Tell me a little bit about media, the, those kind of things. the certifications that they'll be able to get from yeah, this so they, place. They should be able to, of course, they're surf safe and, and the, those kind of uh, things with the culinary arts. Our carpentry classes, as they work on it, get their, they have the OSHA certifications that they do. Um, there should be some entrepreneurship credentials that they'll be able to get. So. So we're excited that we can give them a place to yeah, we're bring the electronics back. Um, you have to have the teachers to do yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and finding those teachers right now. I mean right now, um, we don't pay the high I mean if you're if you're an electrician, you're sure, sure not gonna come to the school and work for teacher pay. No. <laughs> you know, so but but definitely we're open, you know, as opportunities come up, we're really open to, to looking at what and we try to work with we mentioned Tri-County. We've met with them and trying to work with them, too. Uh, we do have some students that are in the paramedic program that was a, the um, partnership with several of the counties. Uh, we do have some students from Graham County that are in that. So we're always trying to work with them for internships um, and you know, just trying to get our students exposed. And what we, We've got to get every, everybody needs to live with a plan, whatever that plan is. And college is not always it right now. It is for some, but it, it is not. Um, for everybody, we just need everybody to have a plan to do something successful when they leave. And you know, one of the other really big advantages to this is, is it will give children some place that they can gather that is safe. Yep. It's a safe place for them to gather. And not, not just the students, but certainly it will draw students. Mm -hmm. So we're really looking forward to being able to, to offer that in the community. So starting out, Angie, what hours are you looking at having to open? <coughs> that would be open, you know, eight to eight to three. Yeah. You know, with school hours to start with, and yeah. then we want to build. But I'd really love to see it open until six in the evenings and on Saturdays, and then summer yeah. would be wonderful to be able to offer some hours. Yeah. You know, our, our, we're you know we're thinking along the lines of having an app you order, they meet you out there and hand you your stuff. You know, if you don't want to come in, so I mean, there's lots of we've got lots of exciting things planned. Yeah. We just get the doors open. We're yeah. closer than we've ever been, and that's exciting. Kobe kind of put us a little bit behind the eight ball it did. with contractors. Yes. So. <laughs> so we hope that it will be something that that you guys will be proud of as well. Yes. Yeah. Thank Kim. you for exposing our students <coughs> to all these different 
you know, things <coughs> that you can offer them to let them know that they don't have to go to college. Right. Like even the drone. What part? Yeah, we do have drone technology. That is one thing we have opened up. And they can get their drone pilot's license while they're still in school right. as well. Awesome. So, Kenneth, did you have anything to ask them? Uh, well, we appreciate you coming in. Um, yeah, on, on this project, the, uh, the building that's there, the uh, sewer main runs directly under the building and under the, uh, the church mouse. Um, and it has been a nightmare. It's terracotta. It's, I mean, <laughs> a nightmare. Um, we have no way to get it if there's a blockage. You say it's the sewer main, so when we do get the, the main towards the church mouse, everything that goes through that line is going to be going back to this. Is would it be okay to fix the plumbing? Um, it's basically a new sewer tap out the back to the new line that they just ran down on the other street um, because. You know, we had an incident here not too long ago where they missed the uh, yeah. the tap, and yeah. this is the, would be way worse. Like we worked on on this main line there in those buildings for weeks, and it created a lot of problems for the church mouse at the time. Yeah. <coughs> I remember those days and how nice that is. If the sewer part of right. it's not going to work, then it's kind of all. Well, no matter what you put in any of those buildings, it, you're going to have the same issue. Right. right. So, yeah, um, I think you do need to. I'll just I'll get with you. Okay. We still have the goal, eventually, that the property beside this will um, become a pavilion area for the community to have a place to gather and that will help support this business as well as yeah. the community because they'll be able to do outdoor seating and they'll be able to supply refreshments and things of that nature for whatever events might be happening there so yeah. just keep playing that's all we'll be just keep playing well thank you for coming in. Uh, yeah. thank you yeah. for thank you for giving us opportunity, us the opportunity. Right. yes yeah, it's good. working together is what gets things done all right <laughs> Thank you so All much. All right, you have a nice day. Thank you. All right. Next up is the uh, the high school was going to mention the like to advertise in the uh, yearbook. There are several different selections there. The different sizes. Kenneth, I know you don't have this sheet of paper in front of you, but it starts out at a full page for three hundred. Half a page for two, fourth a page for 130, business cards 75, or donate a yearbook for 75. I would like to make a motion for. Um, last year, I think we donated a yearbook and done the business card size. Do you want to go for a, a bigger size page? How much is the highest page? 200. 275 here. Uh huh. Uh, yeah. Would you rather have a same size? I have no money. I have no money. Yeah, I'm good with that. Do a fourth of a page for 130 and donate a yearbook. Yeah, I'm good with that. You want to put it in a motion? Or you want me yeah. to? I'll make a motion. We do a fourth of a page and donate it. I second that. All, right. All in favor? Any opposed? <laughs> Next, uh, Debbie, want to discuss pay raises? I know that whenever we were trying to get our budget and we were trying to get everything in the clear, um, we had said that we wouldn't do our pay raises until we got our budget finally 
cleared and we know what we had, but it still looks like it's going to be an issue. And um, I'm confident that we've got the money to go ahead, Kenneth, and do it. And go ahead and do the pay raises that we had discussed back in July. Yeah. So I want to make the motion to go ahead and do the pay raises before the budget for this year is already completed. I have a question. Now with those pay raises, they have money built up there. Are you talking about going ahead and cutting the check for that? No, just from this oh. month forward. Okay. No back dating and giving it from July okay. until now, but just starting as of now, give them the pay raise. And wait we until have. the uh, till after the audit and all that's complete to do the pay raises. Oh. No. See, I'm, I'm calculating their time. I think she's saying just go ahead and give the raises now. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, give the raises mm -hmm. now. I don't really understand what you're talking the about. The money that retroactive. the retroactive pay raise. No, I don't want to do, I don't think we should do the retroactive okay. on it. Okay. Just start it as of now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the work, I'm sorry, whatever work you put into it, yeah, just don't even fool with the retroactive on it. Okay. So do away with the retroactive. Uh huh. Starting as of the month of November. Okay. Yeah, I'll say. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Any opposed? Do we have anything for closed session today? We don't. We have we have a motion to adjourn the meeting. We make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. Okay, meeting adjourned at two or five PM. Appreciate everybody coming out.